give it now. The struggle is over, the struggle is over. The struggle is over, no more fighting, it's over. It's Good evening, over. and welcome, it's welcome, over. welcome. It's over. I'd like to welcome you back to episode 13, Why We Can't Wait, The Call to the Christian Man. I want to continue to thank you guys for coming out each and every week as I allow God to use me and I pray that I am a blessing as this word and this thing that God is blessing me with is definitely a blessing to me. Today I want to take us to the Old Testament. I'll be coming from 1 Samuel chapter 2. Verse, starting in verse 27 and I want to go finish, read it all the way through to the end of the the actual chapter but it's really thick uh, and I'm touching on an old subject but definitely want to take my time here uh, it's going to be very I believe it's going to be very hard to swallow but I must do as God commands and it's reading from the NIV, 1 Samuel chapter 2, starting verse 27. Now a man of God came to Eli and said to him, This is what the Lord says. Did I not clearly reveal myself to your father's house when they were in Egypt under Pharaoh? I chose your father out of all the tribes of Israel to be my priest, to go up to my altar, to burn incense, to wear my ephod in my presence. I also gave your father's house all... The, all the offerings made with fire by the Israelites. Why do you scorn my sacrifice and offering that I prescribe for my dwelling? Why do you honor your sons more than me? I fatten yourselves on the choice parts of every offering made by my people Israel. Therefore the Lord, therefore the Lord, the God of Israel declares, I promised that your house and your father's house would minister before me forever. But now the Lord declares, Far be it from me. Those who honor me I will honor, but those who despise me will be disdained. The time is coming when I will cut short your strength and the strength of your father's house, so that there will, be, there will not be an old man in your family line, and you will see distress in my dwelling. Although good will be done to Israel in your family line, there will never be an old man. Every one of you that I do not cut off from my altar will be spared only to blind your eyes with tears and to grieve your heart, and all your descendants will die in the prime of life. And what happens to your two sons, Hophni and Phinehas? Phinehas will be a sign to you. They will both die on the same day. I will raise up for myself a faithful priest who will do according to what is in my heart and mind. I will firmly establish his house, and he will minister before my anointed one always. Then everyone left in your family line will come and bow down before him for a piece of silver and a crust of bread and plead. Appoint me to my priestly office so I can have food to eat. Why do you honor your sons more than me by fattening yourselves on the choice parts of every offering made by my people Israel? I'm talking to a friend we were talking about how sometimes we as Christians kind of water down God's word and that we miss how serious this word is here we find that Eli although a good man has been letting his sons do whatever they want. He has been spoiling his sons. And it brings me back to the thought of accountability versus judgment. Like I said last time, we often hear the phrase or term that only God can judge me. Although that sounds good and has a very strong element of truth in it, are you sure that is what you want? That's what we must start asking ourselves. Is that, are we sure? Is that what we want? What we are doing here as fellow brothers and sisters are holding each other accountable. That is our purpose. Why is it our purpose? It's because that we are part of the body of Christ. We fail to, to, to realize that. That when one part of the actually human body has an ailment, 
it affects the other part. Such as if a virus attacks the body, the white blood cells in defense attacks this virus. If it did not attack the virus, if it did not pull out that virus, it would then cause an even further ailment or injury or damage to the body. We, we miss this, this, this fact that, that we are a part of the body of Christ. We want this idea that my life is an individual life. But when you accept the call, you are part of the body of Christ. We, we miss this idea, we miss this fact, because we get so caught up in our own selves that we miss the fact that we are to hold each other accountable. We should hold each other accountable in love, but yet still hold each other accountable. 2 Timothy 3 and 16 says that all scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, training, and training in righteousness. It's useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. And it goes on to say in verse 17, so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. The truth is that we are we have we are we have responsibility and have been charged with being each other's accountability partners. The problem is that we truly want what we truly want here is prosperity. We want a word of prosperity. We never want to look past this idea, this thing, this thought of prosperity. We don't want we have this idea that to be uplifting means that it's coming with a, a word of prosperity. To be uplifting is always going to feel good. But I challenge that. I challenge it and say that anything that has been, that has the purpose, ability, and emo emotional and spiritually. I rephrase that. I challenge that and say that anything that has been has the purpose, ability, and power to cause us to improve who we are mentally, emotionally, and spiritually is uplifting. And sometimes that means telling it like it is. The fact is that the reality of it is, as I'm going to tell it like it is right now, we want to do our dirt. We want to do our things with no consequence. We have this idea that only God can judge me. Here we find that Eli have, has the opportunity to correct his sons. But because he did not, and he favored his sons more than he favored God, he will be punished. The fact is we continue to say that we want only God can judge us, but when God judges us, it will be too late. This word is for real. This, this, this walk is for real. We want this idea, we want this thought that only God can judge us and that, that, that until then, that every word that, that needs to proceed out of the preacher's mouth, every word that needs to proceed out of the prophet's mouth, every word that needs to proceed out of your fellow brothers and sisters' mouth should be a prosperity, should be uplifting. Everything that comes out of their mouth should make you feel good. That you don't want anything, any purging at this time. That everyone else need to mind your business. That your relationship with God is your business. And that is so. But how you act within the body is everyone's business. The fact is that this word is good for rebuking. The purpose of God's word is to save us. To redeem us and get us. We must remove ourselves from this idea that the word we receive must be a prosperous word. I say this because the only time that we receive, every time that we are able to receive a, a word, or only time that we say that the preacher preached a good word today, is when it's of benefit to us. This thing called the word was presented so that we could have our way, path, and ticket to redemption. I would love for us as the body, as each individual person, to hold ourselves accountable. That was the purpose of Christ's word.
That was the purpose of Christ's word. That we may be held account, that we may be hold ourselves accountable. That we may be able to look in the mirror, look at ourselves, and say that this is not right. This is not what Christ had in mind. But the fact remains that we're not doing that. The fact is that I wish that I could say that my whole life that I've been holding myself accountable. But my whole life, if I can be transparent here, I, I found myself making excuses for myself. I found myself as I was living in sexual sin, as I was fornicating, I was masturbating, I was, I was watching pornography. As I was living in this thing called sexual sin, I found myself making excuses for myself. Making excuses for the flesh. That I favored this flesh more than I favored God. But what woke me up, what scared me, was that I was afraid that he was going to tell me to turn away from him. That he was going to harden my heart to that way that I was past the point of redemption. That, that I realized that, that it, the Bible tells that no man knows the time, the day or hour. That it, it, it will be like a thief in the night. I was afraid that I would disappoint God so much that I would lose my life. The reality is that I came to the knowledge that this word that I, I was reading but not living was real. The fact is that we will be held accountable. We will be held accountable for our actions. Whether we allow ourselves to be held accountable now or we are judged by the, the good judge, the king, Jesus Christ, as he sits on the throne. We will be judged. So we can go around and say that only God can judge us. But are we ready for that judgment? We want this, this, this we want to live this life how we want to live it, according to our own truths. But at the end of the day, the word tells us that all things shall pass. But this word will remain the same. The fact is that the only pure truth that we have is this word and you can go on and say that that that, that this is written by man but second timothy tells us plain and clear that all scripture is god breathed and useful for teaching correcting rebuking We already know that. We spoke on this. But we must take this word and realize that it is the truth and that it is real. And we can go on living with this idea that only God can judge. That only God can judge us. And indeed you're right. But when that judgment comes, will we be ready? Will we be as accepting of it as we say that we are? Remember. Be like a thief in the night. No man will know the hour. But will you be ready? And will you then say, Only God can judge me. And your wish will come true. But will you be ready? I challenge you to find yourself a strong accountability partner. That where you guys are holding each other accountable. Because if you wait to get right, may be too late. Be blessed. God love and God's grace. And remember, never let your independence rob you from your dependence on God. Be blessed. When I think about all we had to go through to get here, you've been to this place, come on.